the story of Dr. Kildare. Whatsoever house I enter, there will I go for the benefit of the sick. And whatsoever things I see or hear concerning the life of men, I will keep silence thereon, counting such things to be held as sacred trusts. I will exercise my art solely for the cure of my... The story of Dr. Kildare, starring Lou Ayers and Lionel Barrymore. Metro-Goldwyn-Mayer brought you those famous motion pictures. Now this exciting, heartwarming series is heard on radio. In just a moment, the story of Dr. Kildare. But first, your announcer. Dr. Kildare, starring Lou Ayers as Dr. Kildare and Lionel Barrymore as Dr. Gillespie. Blair General Hospital, one of the great citadels of American medicine. A clump of gray-white buildings planted deep in the heart of New York, the nerve center of medical progress, where great minds and skilled hands wage man's everlasting battle against death and disease. Blair General Hospital, where life begins, where life ends, where life goes on. Dr. Hilda, Dr. Gillespie. Well, Parker, what do you want? Sally just called, Dr. Gillespie. <laughs> Remarkable. You've got to get out of here and hide. From Sally? Well, Dr. Gillespie, what's been going on? Uh, well, well, she said a man came in the lobby and he has a machine gun and a violin case and a sack full of money and she couldn't stop it. Oh, it's too late. He's here. He... Is nobody here? In here. Hey, come on in. Oh, I beg your pardon, please. Uh, I'm Enrico Marziano, and I look for Dr. Gillespie. Well, you found him. Uh, uh, put your violin case over there and have a seat. Oh, tante grazie, grazie, grazie. I plan for a long time to come and see you, doctor, but I need eight months to work and to save so I can bring this to you. What is it, Mr. Marziano? It's a donar. Money. Penny, nickel, dime, everything. <laughs> well, gestures of this kind are always appreciated. Uh, well, what's it for? It's uh, for my wife, Carmen. She's uh, very sick. And I un dolor. <laughs> Each week, the pain gets worse. My, all the time, while I save the money, I think, when we go to the great doctor, he will fix. I hear the people talk about you, senor, and so we are here. Well, you are, at least. Where's your wife? Oh, she's away to down the stairs in the big room where we come in. She's a very sick, senor. Oh, all right, Mr. Marziano. I'll examine her and see what we can do. Oh, mille grazie, senor. Mille grazie. Oh, by the way, Mr. Marziano, now what's in the case over there? The ca- oh, that's my violin. I make a living by playing for the people in the street. A violin? Uh, well, I didn't know. I mean, Sally said that naturally I, I thought I'd better go arrange a room for Mrs. Marciano. Well, Dr. Gillespie, that's that. All this laboratory report does is confirm what we've thought for four days. It's a shame. Ah, uh, why do people do it? With all the publicity cancers had, why do they still put off going to the doctor until it's too late? Well, in this case, Marziano apparently thought he had to save up the money first. Ah, money. If she'd been brought here eight months ago, we might have had a chance. But now, the uh, money. I know. But no. we can't tell Rico that. No, no. No, no. He's crazy no. about Carmen, and he thought he was doing the right thing. Can't tell him he should have brought her in eight months ago. Oh, of course not. No, no. But we we do have to tell him that his wife's going to die. Yes. Well, he'll be here any minute. How long do you think she has, Doctor? Well, you saw those x-rays. I'd say a week, maybe two weeks. That's about what I'd estimate. Huh? And we 
we can't do a thing. Dr. Gillespie, Mr. Huh? Martiano's here to see you. All right, Parker. Send him in. Well, now, Mr. Martiano. Oh, gotcha, gotcha. Buongiorno, signore. Good morning, Rico. Oh, it's a fine day outside, the signore. The sun is shining, everything is bright, just like a spring. <laughs> well, maybe today you find what's the matter with my carmen, no? Rico, you'd, uh, you'd better have a seat. Uh, some, something is wrong, Dr. Kilder? You, you tell me, no? Rico, I, um... Uh, you've heard of cancer. Well, see, is that what's wrong with my calm? Yeah. But you will fix? You make everything okay for her, no? Rico, we can't fix. There's nothing we can do. My everybody say you take a calm to this Blair Hospital and, and nothing to worry about. They, they fix everything fine. Oh, I only wish we could, Rico. But uh, this is one of the times we can't. Signore, I walk in here happy just like the bird. It's a beautiful day, and I say, today my calmness may be get well again. But now, the sun will shine, and I feel just like a dead man. I know. We understand. Would you like to go on up and see your wife now? No. Grazie, no, no. Because she look at my face and see the heart inside of me is dead. And then she asks, Rico, why this look? No, signore. First, I, I go sit in the park. I, I come back a little while. Arrivederci. Ah, confounded, confounded tarnation. Good morning, Mrs. Martiano. Oh, Dr. Kildare, buongiorno. <laughs> How do you feel? Oh, it's not too bad. This morning, I'm not thinking I'm alive here in bed. For one hour, I'm going to live in a place so far away. Uh, where is that? It's in Italia, in Napoli. I must think it's a long time ago when I'm a young girl again. That wasn't so long ago. Ah, you'll make polite to say so. But I have a son who's a go to college, Dr. Kilder. Why, I didn't know you had a son. Rico didn't say anything about it. Well, they'll no get along so good. Oh, my Tony is a look just like Rico did when we were young together. So handsome. Mm. Were you born in Naples? Si, senor. In the little house by the bay. And in the night, when the moon is shining, Rico is a come, and we walk on the road by the sea. And he's a play for me on the violin. It's so sweet. Always, he's so good to me. He's make a good life for us for many years. Ah... Uh, I'm not sorry for anything. Not even if I'm going to die, Dr. Kildare, I'm not sorry. Oh, now, what makes you think you're going to die? You try to fool me. I must think maybe Rico tell you to, huh? But I know. I must feel it inside. It's true, no? Yes. Yes, it's true. No feel a bad, senor. I'm no afraid. It's only I, I feel so unhappy when I'm a think of Rico all alone. There'll still be Tony, your son. Maybe this will bring the two of them closer together. I don't think so. No, you, you see, Tony is a move away. 
you know, come home for two years. He's the thing we asked. How he reset all the fashion, old country. He's right, of course. But he should no be ashamed of his papa. Rico is a wonderful man. He's a great man. You want to know something, Mrs. Marziano? I think you're both great people. Jimmy, probably one of the hardest things a doctor has to learn is to keep his emotions separated from his profession. I know. Most of the time, I think I have learned it. But something about this couple hits me. It's hard. Yeah, they're fine people, both of them. With a rare courage and tenderness for each other. And, and faith in life. They're a remarkable pair. And yet we can't save our life. No, we can't. Well, I've thought of a few things we might do, though. Small things, I guess, but better than just standing by doing nothing. Good. For instance, I've had Carmen moved into the best room in the hospital, one of the regent's suites. I build the charges against the general fund. Excellent idea, Jimmy. I wish I'd thought of it. Well, there is one thing I was hoping you'd do. Well, count me in. Dr. Gillespie, I'm sorry to interrupt. Well, what is it, Big Ears? Well... Dr. Carew is here. He'd like to see Dr. Kildare. Oh, well, send him in, Parker. Good afternoon, gentlemen. It was. <clears throat> Dr. Kildare, I have been informed that you made a very irregular charge to the general fund. Oh, most irregular indeed. I suppose you mean Mrs. Marziano's room, Dr. Carew. Quite so, and it simply can't be done, you know. It's been done already. I think the fund can stand it this one time. It's entirely out of the question. Oh, don't think I have it my humanitarian side, too, but this hospital must be kept on a strict... Business like this, and I'm sure... Carew! I am amazed that the name Marziano doesn't mean anything to a great lover of music like you. Well, I suppose I, I, I do know a... <clears throat> Marziano? Huh? A, a, at the moment, it seems to... Uh, oh, slip, uh, you must remember the famous modern opera, La, La Burrasca? The, the one, the grand prize at the Paris Festival in 1924, as I recall. Huh? Oh, yes. Um, yes, indeed. <laughs> I'd uh, forgotten for the moment. Yeah. Kildare and I were sure you'd want the wife of a famous composer like that to have the best, regardless of court. You're you're quite right, Dr. Gillespie. Yeah. I, I I didn't realize that this man was so fit uh, that, uh, yeah. <laughs> that this was the same Marziano, I mean. Yeah. Well, gentlemen, if you'll excuse me, I have a great many things to do. <laughs> <laughs> La Burrasca. You know... <laughs> It'd be remarkable if there really was an opera by that name. Well, Jimmy, let's go to work. We return to the story of Dr. Kildare in just a moment. Dr. Gillespie was calling him. Just a second. Commissioner's on the line now, Dr. Gillespie. Oh, good, 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 good. Here, hand me that phone. Hello? Hello, Tom. Leonard Gillespie. Oh, fine, fine, thanks. Feeling younger every day. <laughs> How are those ulcers of yours? Glad to hear it. No, 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 no. I'm not trying to drum up business, Tom. <laughs> but I would like a small favor from you. 
I don't know whether you recall a violin player named Rico Marziano. Plays in the streets around town. All right, Tom. Thank you. Thank you. Goodbye. There's another one, Parker. You can count him in, too. Well, you've almost covered the list, Dr. Gillespie. Yeah, 32 promises and a pretty fair list of names, too. Mm, yeah. Well, I can't think of anybody I've missed. I hope Kildare's making out all right. Well, he should be over there by now. Wayman took him at least 20 minutes ago. And ah, that... Parker, you idiot. What? You nearly let me forget the most important one of all. Oh! let you. Well, uh, how should shut I... Shut up now. Shut you... up and don't start another argument. Just get on that phone and put a call through to the office of the mayor. Just a second. Yes? Are you Tony Marciano? Why, yes. My name is Kildare. I'm a doctor on the staff at Blair General Hospital. Um, you mind if I come in? Well, I... Thanks. You don't have me mixed up with somebody else, do you? No, I don't think so. You're a law student here, and you're Rico Marciano's son, aren't you? Yes, but did my father send you here? No. Neither of them knew I was coming. Tony, your mother's in the hospital seriously ill. Mama? What's wrong with her? Cancer. It was all my fault. I had no reason to leave them, but I was mixed up and I didn't... I know. You grew up in this country and you wanted to look and act like everybody around you. They had their own ways and maybe people even laughed at them sometimes. That's it. Mostly it was Dad going around the streets with his violin, picking up coins... Raising a son by doing it, holding the love and admiration of a pretty, wonderful woman. I know that. I knew it a week after I left, but I... I couldn't go back. Pride, I guess I... Look, Doctor... About money for treatments. Now, I'm working part-time outside of class hours, so I can no, help... No, no, any... no. It isn't money your mother needs. It's to see you and Rico friends again. I don't know. Dad's got a lot of pride himself. He, he may not be willing to forget. Like to bet? I just hope he will, that's all. Oh, there's one thing, Tony. I said your mother was seriously ill. She is. In fact, she has only a few days to live. I'll get my coat, Dr. Kildare. <laughs> I tell you again, I can't understand. Understand what, Rico? Well, look at this room, all filled up with the flowers. Everybody is sending of flowers and, and, and a telegram. Look, look at this one. It says, my sincere wishes for a speedy recovery for your, your lovely wife, your friend, Commissioner Tomas Avaril. But this man, I know see in my life. But that doesn't make no difference. He see you. It's just like I tell him, Dr. Gilles. My Rico is a great man, but he not think so. Madre Dio. Ma, ma, still, I can understand. Who is it? Only one way to find out. Come in. Oh, Gilles. Hello, everybody. Uh, mind if I bring in a visitor? Hello, Mama. Papa. Tony. Oh, Tony, I'm miss. How are you, Mama? Oh, Genio mio. Before I had the heart froze with ice. But now you're a come. I must start talk like the river at Napoli in the springtime. Tony, you speak with your father. You'd be friends, huh? Antonio. I, I can't find no, no words to say. Papa, I'm sorry. Sorry? But for what are you sorry? I, I said things I, I didn't mean. Oh, that's nothing. That's nothing. It's no matter now. What do you say one time and make me shame that, that I'm nobody? And I, I can't forgive you. My now is a different. 
Look, my boy, look at this telegram. It's from a big people who call me their friend. Look, come on, you read. Read with me. This one is from the commission. Uh, Gillespie speaking. You don't say so, Carew. Well, may maybe you don't have the right spelling of the name. All right, all right, all right. Meet me in my office in three minutes. I've got some telegrams I want to show you. Goodbye. What's the matter? Has Carew finally caught on? Pipsqueak. He's coming up for air for the third time. You stay here, Jimmy. I'll shove his head underwater again. <laughs> simply no use whatsoever in hunting through any more reference books, Dr. Gillespie. There is no Italian composer named Enrico Marziano. You hoodwink me. Hoodwink you? This man is just a street violinist, a mendicant. And you've kept his wife in that room under false pretenses. You and Kildare between you have deliberately... Hello! Shut up. Uh, I beg your pardon. Here. Take a look at these telegrams. Well, I can hardly see what telegrams could have to do... do uh, why? This one is from the mayor. Go on, read them, all of them. Well, I had no idea this man had so many influential friends. I believe we can stretch a point and forget about... Hello! You're a fool. Dr. Gillespie. Good night. He's a fine thing you do for us, the Dr. Kildare. You and the Dr. Gillespie. No, we didn't do anything. Oh, this nice room, all these flowers, so lovely. And this telegram, they are make my Rico feel big and strong again. But it's best of all, you bring my Tony back for be friends with his papa. It didn't take very much bringing. He was just mixed up. Too proud to admit it. Still is good thing. Now Rico is... Listen. Is my Rico playing the violin? Yes. I guess he must be down below there in the street. Would you like the window open? No. No, I may hear it fine. Everything is so strange. It's a like a long time ago. He's a play the same song in Napoli. I'm a feel like a young girl. And it's a springtime by the sea. It's a warm. And I'm a walk on the road with Rico. Happy like a bird. Dr. Kildare, you... You tell Rico, I'm like the song very much. Yes, I'll tell him. So long a time. So good a life. Oh, Rico, me. Rico. Come in, Dr. Gillespie. Uh, Parker said the Marzianos were leaving early, so I wondered if... Oh, when, Jimmy? Just now. Oh, oh that's too bad. That, that's Rico out there, huh? Yes. And I don't think he's really out there at all. I think he's on a road near Naples in the moonlight, serenading a beautiful young girl... A long time ago. In just a moment, we will return to the story of Dr. Kildare.
once again the story of Dr. Kildare, starring Lou Ayers as Dr. Kildare and Lionel Barrymore as Dr. Gillespie. Now, yeah, what a session that was. What's the matter, Jimmy? Tough case this morning? Yeah, obstetrical. Turned out okay. Seven pounds, four ounces. Mother and son getting along nicely. Why do we do it, Dr. Gillespie? Why do we do what? Become doctors. Well? Last night, Carmen Marziano died. This morning, I deliver a new baby. Score, one to one. So what's it all add up to? Life. And death. Well, they're both counterparts of the same thing. What is that same thing? Well, now. The Society for Dealing with Profound Questions is now in session. Dr. Kildare has just asked what is the same thing. Dr. Kildare is a brilliant young physician and surgeon who was occasionally troubled by a hole in his head. And at such times, he thinks he doesn't want to be a doctor. All right, all right. The witness withdraws the question. Maybe I am tired. Last night hit me pretty hard, but when you come right down to it, I guess... If I couldn't be a doctor, I wouldn't want to be anything else in this world. You have just heard the story of Dr. Kildare, starring Lou Ayers and Lionel Barrymore. Dr. Kildare is presented by arrangement with Metro-Goldwyn-Mayer, producers of Malaya, starring Spencer Tracy, James Stewart, Valentina Cortesa, Sidney Greenstreet, and John Hodiak. This program was written by Les Crutchfield and directed by William P. Russo. Original music composed and conducted by Walter Schumann. Supporting cast included Virginia Gregg, Jay Novello, Ted Osborne, Peggy Weber, and Peter Leeds. Dick Joy speaking. (laughs) 